Hi there everybody, Nikki here. Today I'm going to be creating a short video to basically go back over a number of previous videos that both myself and Perry recorded and uploaded onto the YouTube channel to talk about a number of mistakes I essentially made in uh, producing these uh, two videos. And the reason why I'd like to do this is because both myself and Perry received a lot of awesome feedback from both Jesus and Mary regarding a number of quite major injuries that we're both engaging in uh, whilst we're actually going through the recording process of these videos. So what I'd like to do is basically just go back over the videos and create a correction style video whereby I'm hoping to um, literally play clips for everyone of certain uh, parts of these uh, previous videos and then talk a little bit about the um, injuries that were coming through and then also to explain to people uh, why the injuries are so damaging to any potential listeners or viewers and then also what love, truth and humility would actually um, dictate in these situations and what that would look like instead of what actually happened in the videos if, if that all makes sense. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do today. What I'm going to be doing in this video is focusing predominantly on my own personal injuries and addictions that were coming through in the creation of these previous videos that had been uploaded to our channel and I'm going to basically leave Perry's own personal emotions out of that because I feel he would probably want to do that himself and go through a similar correction style video to speak with others about his injuries and the impact they had on the videos and to everybody else at home who were listening. So I just want to focus on uh, my stuff because also I feel after two months from receiving the feedback from Jesus and Mary, I've gone through um, a bit of a process now where I've uh, absorbed and accepted the feedback and I've worked through internally in well, at least part way through internally, of um, recognizing uh, emotionally where I went wrong. And also, I feel I'm at a point whereby I can create such a correction video so that I don't make the same mistakes again. And so, uh, any of you guys who are listening or watching can hopefully clearly follow uh, where I'm going with this video and what I'm trying to kind of explain or demonstrate. I'd just like to make one final comment before I start playing clips from the previous videos and that is just to say that the latest video that myself and Perry recorded uh, was a video called Fear of Sharing Divine Truth and I actually decided to remove this video from our channel after receiving feedback from Jesus and Mary because I quickly realised that almost all of the content of the video was full of error and was full of a lot of different emotions that didn't really include truth or sincerity at all so uh, and love of course so I felt that the wisest thing for me to do was to basically unpublish the video from our uh, YouTube feed just so that the negative impact that the video would have caused if it was left online would have been reduced and I didn't want to kind of do it as a way to kind of cover myself or to hide uh, my injuries. I did it so that I gave myself time to work through the feedback because I knew I wanted to actually create this correction video afterwards and I wanted to actually play the videos and play these clips just to, you know, be as transparent as I poss possibly could with everybody. Yeah, and the reason why myself and Perry want to do a video today about that topic is because uh, we have both noticed on the forum recently there's been a bit of interest shown by others um, who also feel a desire within themselves starting to grow about sharing divine truth as like myself and Perry have been doing. And so there's been quite a few questions there and also um, We've received quite a number of um, private emails as well from a number of people um, asking us about certain things and certain considerations about actually sharing divine truth. So we feel that would be a really cool uh, topic to uh, cover in today's video. Yeah, so um, what we're going to do is we thought it would be really good to share with you guys a little bit of 
of our own experiences of how things started out. Because um, we do get uh, a few emails of, of from people saying, oh, it's kind of like we're inspired by what you and Nikki do. Um, but And then they kind of then say, oh, but it's all right for you because you've kind of got each other and stuff like that. And I wish I'm on my own. I haven't got anyone to, to help me with it. Um, <laughs> so me and Nikki always laugh about that because, you know, we, we only met through expressing our desires and, and sharing truth and then eventually the law of attraction brought us together so there was a point when uh when we were doing this on our own and and even now you know we do take time to do things on our own so it's not like you know we're just like addicted to each other to help each other through yeah and 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 the key illustration of that is the fact that um you know i quit my previous job and I started up the forum without even knowing Perry, even then. Mm -hmm. And that was only because I um, went through certain feelings that I had about sharing divine truth. And I started discovering more about who I was as a, as a soul, my soul, and what my true passions were. And I kind of went through that. And then in me expressing that part of myself and my desire and getting involved in that passion, that's when then it came to be how me and Perry got to know each other and then we've been able to create all of these other things since. So in this first clip that I showed you, the main injury and condition that was coming out of me and that I was portraying to everybody was a condition of arrogance. Now, um, I don't know if you guys may be able to see or feel, but in that clip I was basically presenting myself as this expert and this guy who's basically got the whole divine truth sharing all figured out and all sorted out when that's absolutely not true at all. Um, really, I've got so much to learn about actually sharing divine truth in a loving way and in a truthful way and I wasn't humble and I didn't explain that to everybody when I was actually recording uh, that video. So I just wanted to make clear to everybody that um, you know that was the main problem basically in this video and when I show you further clips um, of the video you'll see that this condition of arrogance is quite prevalent and you'll be able to see it quite clearly hopefully later on as I um, throughout the duration of that video so it's basically a big problem and I was presenting um, arrogance as love throughout the entire duration of the video and obviously that is not something that is loving or um, beneficial or helpful to any of our, any of the viewers. It was um, it actually would have caused quite a lot of damage if I left it all unchecked and I didn't want to create this video and that's what, why I wanted to basically do this because I wanted to highlight to people the dangers of being arrogant and what the condition of arrogance basically allows to manifest and how it can take you away from love and truth basically. So the actual condition of arrogance, there's a lot of negative um, consequences of such a condition. Uh, one of them is it automatically takes you away from God's uh, God's love and truth. It blocks you from your um, either your guides or spirits in a loving, more loving condition than you, and also um, other people on earth who are in a, a, a better condition of love than you are. It actually blocks you from hearing or receiving their guidance because you know when you're arrogant, you just got this feeling like, oh, you know, I already know everything. Um, you know, I don't need to know more, I feel I've got it all sorted out with the condition of arrogance is that it basically, you, it, you, you don't act from a place of love or truth, you kind of just try to almost promote yourself or to promote what you're doing rather than simply just sharing something because you love to do it and you really want to um, give that to other people and that really wasn't coming through at all in um, in this fear of sharing divine truth video. Another big um, issue really with the first um, nine minutes of the clip that I played you 
was that both uh, Perry and also myself, we were not transparent or humble at all with regards to how we both actually met. Now, the, re the reality is, Jesus and Mary into us uh, via email a while ago, and you know we basically presented that um, myself and Perry met through um, our own personal uh, development and growth and law of attraction, when that's not true. It actually did come from Jesus and Mary's own recommendations uh, to each other to get in touch with each other, basically. And, you know, it's a big problem because, as well, there, um, particularly in me, um, there, there wasn't a feeling in me during the recording of this feeling of uh, gratitude to both Jesus and Mary because, really, Jesus um, actually recommended our, well, recommended the forum that I created, as well as Mary is uh, doing the same on her personal blog. and. I completely skipped over all of that in this video because of this condition of arrogance that I had and this feeling that um, I'm in a place where I feel I can um, you know, offer all of this guidance to people when the truth is um, I feel I can to a degree but not to the level that I was portraying in that video at all. You know, I've got so much more to learn and you know, it was, it was hard for me to you know, come to terms with that and also come to terms with how this condition of arrogance in me led me to have this lack of gratitude towards Jesus and Mary because honestly, um, Jesus and Mary have done so much for me personally in terms of helping me so much with my own personal emotions and issues in my life as well as helping me so much with my creations. So they've offered me so much feedback with regards to the forum and with regards to actually uh, videos and you know certain suggestions and ideas and I do honestly and genuinely really love both Jesus and Mary so much for everything they've gifted to me it's been um, such an amazing thing and you know I feel like when I basically realized what I did and how I was basically almost forgetting all of that um, it was just something I really wanted to correct and basically straighten out with everybody else. I'd now like to show you a clip from a video that is still published on the YouTube channel and that is one titled Alignment of Will and Sharing Our Feelings and I just want to highlight basically in this clip uh, one of my main addictions that comes through quite strongly in regards to how I interact with Perry. So I'm just gonna play the clip and then explain more about it afterwards. So where should we start then? Where to start? Um, let talk about our experience yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah. So um, basically a few weeks ago, um, Nick and I, obviously we live together. So we get to feel each other's emotions uh, every day depending on what we're going through. Um, and I guess over the months we've been kind of like working through our own stuff and then just recently we had our own kind of little uh, feelings where we had to open and, and, and share how we were feeling t together. Um, and it was a bit uncomfortable because we had to confront each other and because we've been become like best mates over, over the months, it was the first time we really had to kind of like open our hearts and some of like the things that were a bit uncomfortable in sharing. Um, Nick and I both have injuries with like confrontation, uh, confrontations, um, especially with men. Um, but what's cool is we're mates, and um, you know we're not going to do any harm to each other. But still, um, it was a little bit uncomfortable. However, what happened was actually after the conversation, something really beautiful opened up, and. Um, just like all these new creative ideas started to flow. So uh, how did it start? I can't, I'm, yeah, I'm, well, I've forgotten what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. basically uh, what happened was, um, because me and Perry live in Tavern, we're doing all these projects. So we're doing our YouTube videos, right. the editing, and then also uh, looking at you know the seminar stuff and presenting that, and all the planning that goes along with it. We, like beforehand, we were basically kind of just like, we didn't really have a, a plan. 
no structure. Going. Yeah, we have no, no structure. structure. Yeah. And we were kind of just going, oh yeah, today I'm gonna sort these few bits out and whatnot. And like, like my feelings were that, like, because I was kind of like, okay, right, like there's no, there's nothing really like happening here that's in alignment basically with what we want to do in terms of what we want to do in terms of um, reaching our long-term goals in, in our passions and desires of sharing God's truth with others. So, you know, I, I started um, feeling that um, like, like the workload of things was kind of a bit more like of me. Um, and that's, and I was thinking, um, that was because of like you've still got a job having you and stuff mm -hmm. and I'm I don't have a job I'm working on all the divine truth stuff and I was like okay I think it's important that um, we both take time to learn all these new things to like together rather than just one person kind of doing it and then like leaving it like that um, just because what if you know something could happen to like me for example and then Perry's is like oh crap like what do I do with all this stuff um, so I was kind of feeling like, like, you know, we should be more in harmony with each other basically and talk to each other openly about how we split our time, how, you know, giving like me time to work on my emotions, um, rather than like looking after all the like te technical stuff and all the material stuff. And, uh, and then also how that impacts on Perry and, and then ensuring that he has time to then work on his emotions whilst also learning all this stuff as well. So it was a bit up in the air initially and we we're just going with it. But now as we've be become more busier, we've been kind of like, right, we need to get a solid structure in place and really plan out what we want to do. And then we need to, we, we, we got to a point when we were like, okay, forget like i can say what i think is the right thing to do and perry can say what he feels is the right thing to do but in the back of our minds we're both thinking okay how does god see this situation what we're doing how can we bring our wills in alignment or more in alignment with god's feelings on what's happening basically rather than me just going no i think we should do this like this and then you thinking oh we should do things like this actually mm -hmm. and then just not like being open to like talking like openly about things and then trying to get to like God's viewpoint on the matter. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we start, we, we went for a, a little uh, meeting in, uh, in one of the coffee shops nearby. Yeah. Should we, can I just explain a little bit before that? Yeah. So what happened is like, I, um, do you know, if, if you ever come home one to your, to your partner or you, in your work and all your business and you can feel something that's a bit off, but well, then you don't say anything. Well, um, one night yeah. I came home and I could feel like some of it was going on with Nikki, but I didn't really want to say anything. Um, so I didn't. Um, and then Nikki was able to go off actually. He was very humble and you know, he went off and felt his emotions about something, um, how he was feeling about the whole situation of basically me and Nikki not communicating as effectively as uh, would be possible if we were just open and, and honest as, as God wants us to be. And so, so Nikki eventually did go off and feel his emotions. And the next day when I was at work, uh, I was feeling, you know what? I need to sort this out with Nikki. And I didn't let it go on, you know, for days and weeks and months like yeah. I have done in the past. Um, or maybe some of you guys still do in your relationships. I thought, you know what? My relationship with Nikki is more important um, than any of like the stuff that we're doing together as in like project wise. So I need to clear this. So I just sent him a message that same day after I felt that there was like a little grey area between us, I said, mate, yeah. I want to meet up with you tomorrow or sometime this week so we can have an open, honest chat and um, just share our feelings. And Nikki jumped out the chance and, uh, and yeah, so that's what we did. Yeah, it was really good because I was kind of getting, the feelings I was getting was I was feeling a bit frustrated. Like I was kind of like, okay, like feeling like a lot of this stuff's been down, left to me to do kind of thing. And I went off um, and I let myself feel like some anger and then I got to some other feelings as well. And like when I was in that feeling, I was kind of pray I was praying to God as well. And I was, I was just saying, God, please, I'd love an opportunity where now that I've let go of some of this, that an opportunity comes up there whereby I can speak with Perry about everything that's been going on. 
and uh, and then we can like actually move forward with what we want to do. I mean, I want to do it in in the sense of whatever you feel is best, God. Like like forget about you know kind of like my what I feel is the right direction we should do, and I just want to get that guidance from you, God, and and, and stuff basically. And as I went through those emotions and I was praying to God about having that opportunity to speak with Perry, the next morning. Perry sent me that text like you just mentioned saying oh do you want to like have a talk about like what's going on and I was like yes I was like this is amazing like <laughs> you'll come for some emotion and then God's provided the opportunity that you know for me and Perry to just speak about what's happened um, and what's been going on and trying to get that action uh, action plan together so that's what we did didn't we and the next morning yeah we yeah. went to the coffee shop yeah, we just met up and just kind of like sat down as uh, maybe many of you have done in your relationships in the past. But why we mentioned it today is because we've it's, it's fresh for us again. So we, and we've just felt the the power of what happens when you open your heart. So Nikki and I we had a discussion for maybe two three hours, just saying how we're feeling and a lot of the stuff that we've been feeling about each other and thinking were actually not what the other person was even thinking and feeling as well so there was some misunderstandings and miscommunications and once we got all that cleared up we was able to then um, put some action plans together on the desires that we've been having over the months and since then we're just getting so much stuff done and so yeah. many projects a lot of the goals that we're getting done we've got a lot more structure around how we want to basically live our lives and, and, and work together. So in that clip, there was a great opportunity for both myself and Perry to discuss a really um, important scenario that kind of came up for us both during the whole creation phase of what we wanted to do. So uh, with regards to, you know, like video editing and actually creating videos and going through all of that process. Um, I felt there were a number of um, issues of love that uh, occurred and uh, we both felt it, was, it would have been a really awesome thing to share that with everybody else. However, what happened was as I um, brought up the, um, the topic for discussion in the video and I was being open and honest about some of my feelings that were coming up, so you know, I was open about how I felt like Perry almost wasn't um, basically contributing to the, the effort of doing all the sharing and it was almost left for me to do and I felt I was quite, um, if um, some of my emotions that came up, I mentioned that I felt uh, anger came up and I went to feel all of that before I spoke with him and um, in the actual clip, um, as I talk about all of that and then the conversation moves over to Perry. He he basically was quite resistive in talking about his own emotions or personal emotions or injuries and addictions, and uh, that basically um, caused the issue between us both. And instead of him talking in an open and honest way and a transparent way about it, he didn't really. Uh, talk much at all from his perspective about the situation, and he almost skipped over it and started and he basically changed the topic into something completely different and what he changed the topic to was about him talking about how important it is to share his own feelings um, and really what I then did is I because of this addiction I have to seeking approval from other men and looking up to other men and thinking other men are better than me and they know uh, what the best thing is to kind of go about or talk about I kind of just defer and I just go along with it and you know it's a big problem really because in this video that we, we recorded at the time it was all about um, sharing our feelings and what actually happened in the video was that we were both quite well we were quite hypocritical because um, Perry didn't share his feelings about a video talking about doing that exact thing and I didn't pull him up on it and I just went along with it um, and I wanted to avoid the fear of me bringing it up and then him maybe um, 
you know, not agreeing with me and therefore, you know, m me not receiving that feeling of approval from him. And, you know, it, it basically caused a massive detriment to the viewers um, or the people watching that video because really it actually demonstrated how, um, how basically two people would act in addiction with one another because that's what happened in the clip and that's what was demonstrated. And in reality, um, the loving thing uh, to do would have been, you know, when that happened in the recording, I would have actually brought it up or stopped the recording and, you know, mentioned to Perry, oh, you know what, mate, you know, I feel like um, you've kind of just skipped over that. And actually, when I think back to the recording itself at the time of actually uh, doing it, as I was speaking, I was feeling uncomfortable because I knew Perry um, had some resistance to talking about that. And then when I felt Perry kind of skipped over it, I did have this feeling in me that um, he basically did that, but I still went along with it anyway, and I didn't want to kind of pull him up on it. So, you know, it was a big, it's a big problem. And, you know, it, as I said, it doesn't demonstrate what, um, you know, love and truth would dictate. It demonstrates how to basically avoid fear and not speak up for the truth and act in addiction and just go along with it. And, you know, this, um, this injury I have to seeking approval from other men, it's a large, very large um, injury that I have. And I've had it my whole life. It's also affected um, quite a number of relationships I've had uh, with, with mates, basically. And it does go back down to uh, my relationship with my dad and how, you know, I basically wanted, want to avoid all of those feelings of disapproval and rejection and humiliation, basically. Um, and yeah, I basically didn't demonstrate to everyone at home, um, you know, what love and truth would dictate in that situation. So I just want to apologize to everybody for so on top of that, Jesus provided me with some more feedback about it. And he basically said that because of this feeling I have coming out of me, um, it's almost as if I want like another, um, another guy to come along and rescue me in a way and save me and um, like basically provide me with the feeling. So like a daddy kind of uh, feeling I was projecting out. And he mentioned that this kind of injury or addiction uh, would attract basically men into my life who basically want to just dominate everything I do and dominate me and take control over me. And that's essentially what happened in uh, this clip with Perry. And then also it, it happened in, um, well, it's happened in not just this clip that I played you, but a number of other videos and also the uh, fear of sharing divine truth video as well. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just this instant feeling I have of just deferring my own knowledge and what I feel is uh, the right thing to do, uh, to just go along with something that somebody else wants to do, just so that then I feel like they like me and that they're my mate. So I'm now gonna play another clip from the Fear of Sharing Divine Truth video, just so you guys can um, obviously watch that. And then I'm gonna explain the um, issues of love in what both myself and Perry uh, did in that, that particular point of the video. So, um, for me, that's where it started, really. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, um, similar to, uh, to Nikki, for myself, um, in the beginning of coming across the teachings, um, like, you hear all the information, and then there's this part of you which wants to share it. Um, but what I found was, because I hadn't received any of God's love, I didn't know um, what I was going to say was actually true to the people and so it brought up all my fears because I was unsure and, and so subsequently when I'd start sharing myself with people there was that little bit inside of me which was going I'm going to share this information but I don't know if it's true because I even think that I'm crazy myself as well um, and that just I just got the reflection back from people yeah. 
Um, oh man, sorry, I'm just feel. Yeah, no, it's alright. Hi guys. Um, ironically, something really quite powerful just happened um, when me and Nikki were just um, starting to talk about fears and presenting divine truth. And ironically, my fears <laughs> started to come in about sharing divine truth. Um, and we had to stop the recording, so that's why there was a fade there. So there like a little interlude. And um, yeah, we had quite a big break where I just had to go off and feel about how I was feeling. And um, there was quite a lot of like frustration coming in me that I was, cause I was feeling shut down. Um, and basically I was really excited about talking about this topic beforehand. And then as I started to go into it, when Nikki was chatting, I just started to space out and I just felt really uncomfortable. And, um, and obviously, because this is on camera as well, like I became like super self-conscious and I didn't really know what to do with myself. Um, so basically we stopped the camera and I went off and I just wanted to express just some anger that I was feeling about feeling shut down and stuff like that. Um, and then also some feelings about me kind of, um, I, was, I was blaming God for, for, for giving me these passions and desires um, that I know that I want to do and like sometimes it feels really hard and so I just was like was just kind of like blaming God for like creating me this way and like putting these passions in my heart because I know that that I, I will push through them like I have a desire that I want to push through them and sometimes it's really difficult. It, it can be seen that after I finished speaking about something that I wanted to share with, with everybody the conversation moved over to Perry and quite soon after he um, started talking he felt that he got shut down by spirit and so we both chose to um, basically stop the recording there. Now what actually happened was um, maybe 30 or 40 minutes after we stopped recording uh, we actually chose to um, go back and try and finish the rest of the video without um, basically allowing each other or basically allowing ourselves um, to go through or feel the emotions that were triggered um, at that point. And, um, you know, it was quite a, a large mistake in that regard because, you know, we, we, we came back to actually recording and continuing the video whilst we were still in certain emotions and you know, we both thought that that would have been a good thing to do. When in reality, what Mary mentioned in her feedback was that it's actually quite a um, an unloving um, response that you're trying to elicit from uh, the audience by still purposefully going to record while she's still in the emotion itself. And then therefore she also questioned how sincere the actual emotion was that was coming up for Perry in the clip. But also as well, my um feelings of wanting to go along with it but also you know the, the similar feelings were being triggered in me as well and you know that was a, a result of both of us kind of skipping over um injuries we still have and um you know injuries we still both have with our dads essentially and uh, we weren't being sincere about that and Truth be told, we should have just cut the filming there and then and let ourselves feel fully what feelings were coming up and deal with them or at least partway process them before we go back to recording again. And um, and yeah, I mean, I don't really want to um, talk too much about Perry's own personal emotions and the injuries that were coming through because as I said earlier, that's something that I feel you know he would probably want to do in the future. And, you know, I just wanted to basically share with everybody um, just the principle of, you know, the, the error we made in, you know, when emotions started coming up, we, instead of, you know, just shutting it off and feeling them and then coming back, we kind of shut it off, didn't feel it through the emotions and we're still in the emotions when we were recording. And, um, and yeah, that's not a, uh, a loving, um, intention and feeling we had towards you know the viewers and the people who are actually uh, watching at home
Now what I'm going to do is actually play you a, um, a series of uh, clips uh, from the Fear of Sharing Divine Truth video and parts and the clips I'm going to uh, play to everybody are clips where I'm just expressing my feelings and injuries and, um, and basically then um, afterwards I can just talk about what injuries were coming through and why they were unloving or untruthful basically and um, and also I just like to just remind everybody that when you um, are watching uh, these clips uh, just to try and be sensitive to um, the, the, the actual feeling of arrogance that was coming through quite strongly in me just to see if you can kind of pick pick up on that and the feeling of, of um, basically me feeling like I've got it all figured out. So um, yeah, I'm going to just play this, this series of clips now and then I'll explain them all afterwards. Another thing I've realised is, you know, when you're going, I used to think, but why has God made it so you can't see God and all of this? and and whatnot and then I realized like recently the, the whole beauty of it it's the way God is and how it's all done through emotions and love no matter where you go on earth or in the spirit world or what situation you come against if you have that relationship in your heart with God God is always there and you know you you can get through anything when you have that feeling no matter what and you know it just adds to the whole beauty of everything and how God's done it it really does it's really all about your own soul condition whether we're on earth or not like you know all this bad stuff's happening on earth but if you've got that relationship with God in your heart and you're still feeling like all this love from God it's almost like you know you can carry on with life you can still live on earth and still do things and you still be happy regardless of what other people do to you yeah, all the stuff that happened in the video is just a great demonstration for everyone who's watching about the challenges that that anyone who wants to do this stuff faces, really. So one of the things that I'd like to talk about now is in relation to that clip, I was um, actually addictively um, bragging almost in a way about my personal experiences or relationship with God. And I was um, portraying this um, quite strong um, feeling that I'm a person who has, like I said earlier, got it all figured out and knows what I'm doing and I'm regularly receiving God's love and God's truth and I'm just, you know, on this mission when none of that's true or in harmony with God's love at all, none of it. And when... Um, Mary um, wrote her feedback to me she asked me to reflect upon how basically different um, differently I was presenting myself and presenting um, uh, principles of divine truth in comparison with how Jesus does it and so what I did was I basically um, watched a number of um, Divine Truth videos uh, whereby Jesus is obviously teaching and sharing uh, these principles with every, everybody and I found that you know pretty much all the time what Jesus does is he uh, focuses his attention on discussing uh, principles of Divine Truth with everybody and he basically does it in a way to um, you know almost you know, inspire people and to help people's own understanding so they can go away, feel about what he shared and how they can basically apply those principles to their life. And I know for me, when I watch um, any Divine Truth video, when Jesus mentions a principle, my mind and my mind starts racing and I start feeling about how that principle applies in my life and where I can start incorporating it and you know what I can start looking at tackling basically and you know Jesus quite really um, you know divulges about his own personal emotions unless it is to illustrate a principle or a point if he feels um, the audience are feeling a bit 
um, stuck in terms of understanding what he was trying to say. And very rarely, um, Jesus actually talks about his own personal relationship with God. It almost never comes up for him. And Mary asked me to feel about why I felt like I, why it came up so much for me, basically, when I speak. And, you know, a lot of that is, again, resorted to, uh, attributed to the, the condition of arrogance that I had in this video. And also, it's basically goes back to my um, my relationship with my dad and certain injuries that I was desiring to skip over and avoid when I was creating this video and really the injuries that I wanted to avoid and I wasn't humble to were injuries of a lack of self-worth um, feelings basically and you know I wanted to avoid um, you know feelings of you know disapproval I wanted to avoid feelings of like I'm not as um, kind of grow, uh, grown or developed in love as I want to be or wish or believe I am I wanted to avoid that and um, in you know I, I wanted to avoid the sadness of how I felt about myself and um, you know as a result of me avoiding that I took on this facade of arrogance to cover over those feelings and to kind of show people that I do get it and you know I'm kind of like this expert guy who knows everything when that's just not true at all. Also I'd like to share with um, my injury of arrogance what I tend to do is I tend to uh, resort to um, well what I've tended to do in the past is resort to um, this condition when there are other men around me who kind of have similar feelings and emotions and I kind of take on the facade of arrogance in order to get their approval too and you know obviously that's such a big problem and it basically portrays to everybody that a feeling of I feel I'm better than other people when I don't actually feel like I feel that feeling like deep down in my heart it's more of like um, a feeling I portray to get somebody else's approval um, and for them to like me um, because I've associated quite a lot with with guys like that in my life and I always feel like another guy's better than me basically and so that's what I tend to do to get that approval so you know as I said earlier it's such a huge huge um, injury and you know I was desiring to skip over it like, I just want to do this so much for God like that's the feeling that has got me through all of this like, the feeling if you don't have a feeling in your heart of like you desperately want to do it for God and other people you you'll stop like just all the pressure that you will come under will make you bend and you'll stop, um, like shut that part of yourself down. And um, that's just how it is. And, you know, it's from both of us, just keeping our hearts on God. Um, it just helps us so much. And um, like this video is just such an like important lesson because this is the stuff that all, like all of you guys, if you have to share the same desire as me and Perry, you're going to come up against the same the same battles with uh, all the people and spirits. And it, it is the first you know batch of people who go ahead and do it. They're going to come up against the greatest challenges because you know it's doing something that goes against the grain of the world, <laughs> doing oh, something yeah. that goes against the grain of like what is it four billion spirits or however many surround the earth. I don't know how many, I, I could be way off there, but it goes against the grain of all of them who are, you know, negatively affecting people on earth. And, you know, it's like, for me, when I focus my heart on God and, and what I want to do and what I know is the loving thing, that gets me through just feeling that feeling towards God and like sharing that feeling towards God. Um, and um, 
and yeah, I mean, it's a case of just always being humble to the feelings that you have that come up um, and let yourself feel them. And then that gets you through slowly. Um, Cause like myself and Perry, we both feel so much that, you know, we want to just do this for the world, like for everyone on it, you know, not, not just ourselves really because when you future generations future well. generations like yeah. when when you're um you know on like when we're on like we're on earth now and you see just the state of like how things are on earth and it's like you know like i really want to do this for, for for god no matter what like no matter what happens and over time i've been realizing that the more i've been engaged in my desire to do this the more concrete the feeling gives within me that I don't care what happens to me in the future, I just don't care. Like in the sense of my feeling in my heart is so strong that I'm going to do this for God regardless of what happens to me. Like honestly, like the feeling I'm starting to have in me is like, like if even if that means I die, then so be it. Like I can't compromise what, what I know, what I've learned for just fear and worrying about what everyone's going to do or what may happen to me i just can't do it i won't be able to live with myself if i if i you know chose otherwise and um and also a great thing with that is you know you're not you you're not as worried about you know just doing things that you want to do as well and worrying about who else might do it with you or not like we when we both started we didn't know we'd end up meeting each other and living together and doing all this stuff we just went off our own things first and as we've both been getting in our passions and desires more we've been doing more things my cousin Pete obviously as well he's um, been create, he's been doing some Divine Truth podcast uh, talks and engaging some of his desire to share Divine Truth with others and then obviously more people have um, got in touch with us privately and on the forum expressing that they want to do the same thing Mm-hmm. And um, and yeah, it's um, it's just that such a strong feeling, like in your heart, that look, I'm just gonna do this, like no matter what, no matter what, I'm gonna do it. Like one thing I recently came to a realization about myself when I was doing my own journaling was, you know, I I was feeling all of these like real painful emotions of, about myself and uh, with women and also how I view myself and. Um, I was just like, I, I was writing and I got to a point near the end and I just said, like, God, I just really want to help bring your kingdom as it is in the spirit world to the earth, like more than anything. And then I, like, as I was writing that, I could feel like just this overwhelming feeling entering me. And then I just wrote, like, I wrote, God, this is this is a dream that we both share. And as soon as I wrote that, I realized that, you know, like this is, you know, this is, this is who it is. This is the bigger picture of it. You know, this is not for me or for, you know, Perry, like, you know, as, as much, it's more doing it for God and wanting to do that for God and having the same dream as God. And like, you know, as Perry said, I've had to go through loads of things myself of like, God, why have you put this in me? Like, why have you created my soul like this and put me in, in this earth, put me on this earth how it is now? It like, it just felt unfair for me before. And I went through these feelings a couple of months ago. And, you know, I got to a point where I was like, instead of feeling angry about it, as I like, you know, went through the feelings and feeling the sadness of that, I got to a point where I was just feeling so um, like grateful to God, like God created me like that where I can do that and I can help as many people as possible help you know people get out of their darkness as I've been getting out of mine slowly and you know I'd love it more than anything in the future if you know we can go to all these different places on earth and you know go to um, you know third world countries as well and help them as you know the the western world starts realizing you know all all of these principles and and whatnot because really it's like we've got to really help the western world first kind of thing before it will really have like a a great huge impact on you know the third world countries that don't have 
basically who have been raped up all of their resources this whole time. And for me, more than anything, I would love to do is like actually like going to like these third world countries at some point in the future and talking to these like amazing people and telling them about God and, and like I would love more than anything to bring back like equality back on earth and telling people about the real God like you know hardly anyone on earth knows who, who God really is and what God's like but through this process of me and Perry going through our own stuff with God we're realising just how amazing God is and like what God wants as well. Also another injury that comes through quite strongly in me um, in these clips um, is this um, I constantly um, talk to everybody or share with everybody this feeling that I feel like I want to or have to do it for God and I almost, well I do, portray this feeling like I've got no choice in the matter and I just have to do it when the truth is, you know, that injury is way out of harmony with the law of free will and, you know, that law that Jesus and Mary teach. Um, and again, it's related to um, injuries I've, I've got with wishing to serve um, like, uh, like a father figure, basically. And, um, you know, I, I got into quite a lot of feelings of almost like this importance or this feeling of self-importance that I um, was portraying to everybody and feeling like I've got this um, capacity to almost like uh, save the world basically and you know that has come from the arrogant condition that I have been referring to in this video uh, whereas you know what Mary and Jesus always uh, promote is the feeling of um, finding opportunities to love in the world and you know that's actually a humble viewpoint of uh, somebody who's acting in their desires and passions in order to gift things to others based on their own love they have for other people and you know for me I was you know got into a lot of addiction with that you know and Mary actually provided a really good um, kind of illustration to highlight her point or highlight that point of feedback to me and she said that she felt um, like she was just waiting for any moment for both myself and Perry to just rip open our, our shirts and show like a big S like a Superman S on a, on a vest underneath and you know that really helped me understand what she was getting at because that is literally how you know I was I was talking about myself and talking about God and talking about you know uh, doing things for 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 the world and it's just not that's just not loving or truthful at all it's just not those emotions are really um, injured basically and um, and yeah I mean when I received the feedback from Mary and I felt about it um, and realized that I was um, realized that I was presenting uh, these feelings or these injuries to other people feeling well these feelings uh, towards God or about God to other people feeling that they were loving and truthful and sincere when they weren't and I was basically presenting to people a lot of untruths about God's actual feelings and I, I didn't know them um, in that video and I still don't know them to be honest now um, it's just that I was presenting a facade that I did know them and you know it um, you know, it, it does show quite a large lack of respect for God and God's feelings because of this feeling of arrogance that I had. And, you know, it, it goes totally against, um, you know, the feelings and um, experiences that I've been so grateful to receive from God at this point. Um, it goes totally against all of that. And, um, you know, like for me, um, the two main things that I wouldn't wish to ever do um, is the first being sharing uh, uh, divine truth principles or truth or God's truth with other people when it's not actually God's truth and basically uh, promoting error in other people and the second one is also 
um, that you know it's like the worst thing for me to um, basically portray um, like feeling that I know God's feelings about what God wants for everybody and what God wants for me and what God wants for the world that aren't actually true um, and you know for me both of them um, areas are like where I feel my main passion passions lie in terms of sharing divine truth with others and also um, basically helping people understand more about the principles of divine truth that can maybe help them um, develop their own personal relationship with God and you know because of my injuries that I, I wasn't humble to there I completely um, basically went against all of that because of this condition of arrogance and other addictions that were coming through in uh, in these clips that I just played you I basically um, completely skipped over um, the, the reasons why I'm kind of wanting to do this and wanting to share divine truth as best I can with other people and it's really you know down to my own um, kind of heartfelt feelings to uh, to do this um, and to offer gifts to other people and um, you know I was presenting a lot of um, false concepts of the, the law of free will you know because God just wants all of us to do whatever we want to do, whether that is sharing truth or playing music or, you know, dancing or, you know, anything. You know, God just wants us to do what we want to do. And, you know, while, you know, I feel it would be amazing if, you know, more people knew about divine truth and more people knew about the opportunity that is open to all of us with regards to developing our own personal relationship with God, you know, everybody's got a choice at the end of the day and, you know, that's something that I completely skipped over in, in, in that video and something I didn't get across as an important principle for everybody. Now watching back the, um, the actual clips from, you know, the uh, Fear of Shame Divine Truth video in particular, you know, a lot of what I, um, you know, said in that uh, video and presented in that video to everybody else feels so um, just so cringeworthy um, you know I've, I um, you know I, I, and I basically almost you know when I finished that recording with Perry I was feeling like I'd done a great job and you know I felt that you know I absolutely nailed it with what I wanted to say and felt it was going to be really awesome and things like that and um, you know, I was you know completely blind to all of this stuff that was playing out, and um, you know I just feel it's an important thing for me to um, you know basically be transparent and play the clips and show people the injuries that were coming through because I just don't want other people to feel a sense of inspiration of basically from me in basically arid feelings and beliefs that I was presenting and portraying and I don't want people to feel that those feelings are basically in harmony with love or truth because they weren't at all. It's just, it's just not uh, something somebody who has a more purified desire to share divine truth would do at all. You know, like if you, you know, watch those clips and then just think about how Jesus does it, it's completely different, like completely different feeling, you know, you can feel how Jesus is just purely sharing his feelings and sharing divine truth in, you know, with absolutely no, um, no strings attached basically, you know, he's not um, invested in what any other people feel or you know, do in relation to his desire. He kind of, he just, you know, wants to share it because he loves it so much and he um, has a feeling like he wants to um, just basically um, assist other people. And, you know, for me in this video, a lot of my own um, injured feelings are coming through that basically taints the pure expression of my desire in sharing divine truth. And, um, you know, they're basically, you know, injuries that have 
um, be, be, that began coming up for me before this video but what I actually did was I kind of tried to avoid them and also Jesus mentioned to me before um, a couple of months ago um, this um, injury I, I have in terms of this arrogant feeling that sometimes comes out of me and um, you know I skipped over that again in, in the fear of sharing divine truth video and as a result you know it had a detrimental impact to whoever watched it basically so um, yeah I just wanted to share with everybody um, you know just how important it is that you know if you feel like you want to share divine truth that you remain as humble as as possible and don't overstretch yourself like um, for me I kind of got um, carried away because I created the forum just over a year ago now and I maybe done six or seven videos with Perry along with um, uh, basically presenting a Divine Truth presentation in London a few months ago mm -hmm. and after that presentation I got so carried away with myself and what I felt I could do um, you know and I just got caught up in this feeling of you know I know exactly what I'm doing I'm just gonna go all out and you know I got I was very gung-ho about it all without being sensitive emotionally and um, having that level of humility to basically purify my desire and so I feel that's you know an important principle that I'd just like to share with everybody else um, in this in this video. I've now come to the end of uh, showing you um, you guys the previous clips from later videos that both myself and Perry created and what I hope to have achieved is you know to try to highlight in as much detail and clarity as possible the distinction between the unloving uh, attitudes and conditions that I was engaging in and also the untruth that I was sharing with people and what somebody who was in a more loving condition somebody who was in a condition of love and truth and humility would have done or would have potentially uh, said so um, so yeah, I just felt it was incredibly important for me to, um, you know, create this video when I felt I've gone through enough of the um, emotional process to be in a place where I can successfully do this. Um, I actually wanted to create this video um, like a week after I received the feedback. Um, however, Mary um, thankfully provided me with more awesome feedback and she said, you know, Nikki, um, you know, instead of um, kind of uh, rushing or trying to correct your mistakes, it would be probably a wiser decision to um, absorb all the feedback, feel about it more, and then go through a process of looking at how you can correct your mistakes. Otherwise, you know, there's probably a high chance you'll act in um, similar injuries basically again, and then you'll create more mistakes and cause more potential uh, detriment to other people. And, you know, obviously that's something that I didn't want to do. So, um, so yeah, I, I just want to say um, sorry to everybody who watched that previous video and um, felt like, um, you know, they, they felt almost like a sense of um, inspiredness or feelings that what me and Perry presented were truthful and loving when they weren't at all. Uh, so I just want to apologize to everyone there. And also, of course, I would just like to um, share my immense gratitude for towards both Jesus and Mary for everything they've done. They've provided me with so much amazing and wonderful feedback that has really helped me understand these injuries in a lot more detail and also for helping me in terms of um, kind of being as transparent as possible with what happened because I was in quite a lot of um, panic initially when I received all the feedback and um, and in Mary and Jesus' kindness and love and care that they were showing not just to me but everybody else, they um, felt it was a good idea to you know share a lot of the feedback that they gave to me and Perry on the forum, just so that 
you know, it gives other people a chance to realise that we've received feedback, feedback, and also that the uh, videos um, had a lot of error in them, and also that allowed uh, me um, time to kind of go work through the feedback and the points without feeling like a sense of rush to go about a correction process. So um, I just like to thank uh, Juice and Mary so much. Um, I love them both incredibly for everything they've done for me and for everybody else. And um, and yeah, I um, yeah, thank you everybody for listening and um, take care.